This has to be one of the easiest methods for making a loaf of high hydration sourdough bread. This bread is 80% hydration, it's got a mildly open crumb, it's got a crispy crust on the outside, and a soft and fluffy interior. And the great thing about this bread is you just mix all the ingredients together in the same bowl at the same time. No need to auto lease. Here's how to make it. The night before you want to make sourdough bread, take your starter out of the fridge and feed it. Just like I explained in my last video, I only keep 25 grams of starter in the fridge, I feed it exactly what I need for my recipe, and then I never have to throw away any sourdough discard. But no matter how you maintain your sourdough starter, you're going to need 100 grams of active starter for this recipe. So take 25 grams of leftover sourdough starter and feed it 50 grams of water and give everything a stir. Just mix it together so the starter dissolves into the water. Then you're going to add 50 grams of bread flour. But really, you could use whole wheat flour or whole grain rye flour. Anything will work fine for the starter feeding. Just feed it 50 grams of water, 50 grams of flour, and then mix all of that together until your starter reaches something like a pancake batter consistency. Clean off the sides of the jar and press the starter so it's flat. Then mark the top line with the rubber band so you can see how much the starter rises overnight. Pop the lid on and let your starter sit out at room temperature overnight or for around 8 hours until it doubles in size. It usually just takes 8 hours for my starter to look Look like this. Some people like to do the float test at this point, but pretty much all you need to know about starter is this. If it rises, it will make your bread rise. So when your starter looks like this, doubled in size, you can go ahead and mix your dough. Start by adding 350 grams of water to a mixing bowl. The next ingredient you'll be adding is the starter, which already has flour and water in it. So in total, you're going to end up with 400 grams of water in this recipe to 500 grams of flour. So it will be an 80% hydration loaf of bread. Relatively high. Next, add the starter. It's going to be 100 grams of active sourdough starter. You should have about 25 grams of sourdough starter left over like I do. Move that back to the fridge and save it for your next loaf. You don't have to throw away any sourdough discard. I've got a video on this maintenance routine in the description. So go ahead and stir together your sourdough starter and water, and then add 10 grams of salt. Sea salt or kosher salt is fine for this. Then stir lightly to dissolve the salt. Then add the last ingredient, your flour. I'm adding 50 grams of whole wheat flour and then 400 grams of regular bread flour. Both of these are from King Arthur brand of flour. If you're using a different brand of flour, your dough might end up being a little bit wetter or drier than mine. Just keep that in mind. Now that all the ingredients are in the bowl, go ahead and stir everything together until it forms a cohesive dough. You can do this with your hands or with a spoon. I prefer to use a spoon. And depending on the recipes you're used to making, or maybe ones you've made in the past, this dough might feel drier or wetter than what you're used to. For me, I usually make a 70% hydration dough. So this is a little bit wetter, a little bit stickier than what I'm used to, but it's still really manageable and you can do it without auto leasing your dough. You really can just mix everything together in the same bowl and have good results. I've done it plenty of times. Your dough should form a shaggy but cohesive lump when you're done mixing it. It should look something like this. Go ahead and cover it up at this point with a kitchen towel and let it rest for just 30 minutes. During this 30 minute rest, the gluten will develop in the dough and the dough will hold together a lot better. 30 minutes later, the fun begins. You're going to do your first set of stretch and folds. You're going to do three sets of stretch and folds spread out by a half hour in between each one. So grab an edge of the dough, stretch it up into the air, and fold it over the top of the dough. Then grab the next edge of the dough, stretch it up, and fold it over. And do the same thing over and over until the dough starts to tighten up a little bit and hold together a little bit better. For this first set of stretch and folds, I went around the bowl 16 times. So feel free to just keep stretching and folding until you feel the dough tighten up and start to hold its shape a little bit better. Once the dough looks like this, cover it up with a kitchen towel and let it rest for another 30 minutes. Time for stretch and fold number two. You'd be surprised how much a half hour of rest can really transform your dough. When I feel the dough, it's a lot stretchier this time, and when I give it a stretch like this, I can almost see through the dough with the full window pane test before the dough starts to rip. That's a good sign that the gluten is becoming well developed. So just give your dough another set of stretch and folds like the first time. The first time I gave the dough 16 stretches, and this time I just gave it 8 stretches before I felt the dough start to tense up. So just give your dough as many stretches as it needs until it starts to tighten up a little bit. Then cover up your dough and let it rest for another half hour on the counter. 30 minutes later, it's time for the third and final set of stretch and folds. I'm going to do this third set of folds in a glass bowl that I've greased with a little bit of olive oil. That's just going to make it easier to fold, and it's going to give me a nice place to let the dough rise during the bulk fermentation stage. So move your dough to another bowl if you want to, and give it one final set of stretches and folds, 
This time around, you can be a little bit gentler than the first and second sets of stretch and folds. You'll notice that air bubbles have been forming in the dough. I see one right here. And you wanna keep those air bubbles intact for that light, airy interior of the bread. So just do about another eight stretches and folds, one or two times around the bowl, then flip it over so the smooth side is up and the seam side is down. I'm seeing some good air bubble action in my dough. That's good stuff. Then cover up your dough with the lid and it's time for bulk fermentation or the first rise. Let your dough rise at room temperature on the counter until it's about doubled in size. If your kitchen is warm, this could go relatively quickly, but if you're in a cold kitchen, this could go fairly slowly. So you gotta be patient with sourdough. It took my dough about three and a half hours for it to double in size like this. So from the time I mixed it until now, it was a total of five hours. Let your dough rise for as long as it needs to double. Then it's time to pre-shape your dough once the bulk fermentation is over. We're going to pre-shape this into a round ball and then later form it into an oval shape for the final loaf. So to get a round ball, just go around the dough with your hands like this, cupping and pulling, kind of spinning it around in a circle. That's going to build some tension across the top of the dough, creating a nice tight surface on the top. You can do this with your hands or use a bench scraper like this. And once your dough is rounded, go ahead and let it sit on your counter uncovered for a half hour. This is called the bench rest, and it's going to allow the dough to relax so we can shape it into an oval later. 30 minutes later, your dough will have flattened out a little bit, and it's ready to shape for this banneton basket. I've got this oval banneton basket, the same one I'll link in the description in case you don't have one of these. Dust your banneton basket with a little bit of rice flour or whole wheat flour and dust the top of the loaf with a little bit of bread flour. That's going to create a nice nonstick barrier so we can put the dough against the counter and it won't stick. Flip the dough over now so that the smooth side is facing down against the counter and the sticky side is now facing up. Gently stretch out the dough into a square shape like this. This is going to make it easy to fold and roll into an oval shape. Go ahead and take one third of the dough, starting on the right side like I'm doing here, and fold that third over the middle third. Then take the left third of the dough and fold that over the middle as well. Press it down a little bit to seal the seam. And then starting on the side that's farthest away from you, tuck and roll the dough like this going towards yourself. Tucking and rolling, tucking and rolling, creating a tight cylinder of dough. And you end up with an oval shaped loaf like this. To make this loaf a little bit prettier, I like to take the sides of the dough like this, fold the flap underneath the dough. If you don't do this, you might see a swirl in the dough after you bake it. It's not a big deal, but I do like to fold those flaps underneath the bottom before I bake. This is my shaping technique. I really like it and it gives me good results. You can use a different technique if you want, but I promise you'll get good results with this one. So give it a try. Flip the dough over so it's technically upside down into your banneton basket. The seam side should be facing up. And then you could let your dough proof for a couple hours at room temperature, but I prefer to move my dough straight to the fridge at this point. I let it proof for 8 to 24 hours, pretty much till the next day whenever I'm ready to bake it. The next day, 30 minutes before you're ready to bake your bread, go ahead and preheat your oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit and put your Dutch oven or whatever vessel you're using to bake your bread in inside the oven to preheat along with the oven. Once your oven is preheated, take your dough out of the fridge. It should be nice and cold. It's perfectly fine to bake this bread cold straight from the fridge. I do it all the time. You don't need to let it warm up to room temperature. The cold dough will also be easier to score, so that's another plus. To get the dough out of the banneton basket, just release it from the sides a little bit with your fingers. That's gonna make it easier to come out of the basket. And then get a piece of parchment paper that's a little bit bigger than the dough and flip the dough over onto that parchment paper. Since you release the dough from the sides of the basket, it should slide out pretty easily. And there you go, you're ready to score your dough. Brush off some of the excess flour on top of the dough, and then get your trusty dough lam. You can also use a plain razor blade without a holder if you want to, but it's much safer to use a holder. Holding the blade at a shallow angle, score one long slash across the top of the dough from the far end to the near end, just like this. Then when you bake your dough in the oven, it'll burst open along this score mark as the bread rises. Now that your dough is scored, go ahead and grab the parchment paper on the two ends and carefully transfer it into your hot Dutch oven or whatever baking vessel you're using. Close the lid to trap the steam, and you're going to bake this at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes with the lid on. 20 minutes later, go ahead and remove the lid of your Dutch oven and you can admire your oven spring. Hopefully your bread burst open beautifully like this one along that score mark. But no matter what the bread looks like at this point, if it's puffed up in the oven, you're on the right track. With the lid off this time, continue baking at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes to get some nice color on the loaf. 
Then remove the bread from the oven and transfer it to a wire rack to cool. Let it cool for at least an hour because if you cut into it too early, the steam will give the bread a gummy texture. So let it cool for an hour and just enjoy the smell of your freshly baked bread as it fills the house. One hour later, I can't wait any longer and I'm slicing into this loaf of bread. You definitely need a good bread knife for this, something with a serrated edge. This loaf of bread being 80% hydration definitely has a more open crumb than my standard sourdough bread recipe. I really like how the inside of this loaf turned out. It ended up having a crispy crackly crust on the outside that wasn't too thick, and the freshly baked bread was still fluffy and soft on the inside, which I think is essential for this type of sourdough. And as for the taste, just like with my other sourdough bread recipes, the flavor wasn't too sour, but there's just enough tang, just enough unique flavor to let you know that this is real bread. You can tell it's not made with commercial yeast, and it's miles away from tasting like a store-bought loaf of bread. But the greatest part about this bread is the method. Just because this is a higher hydration sourdough doesn't mean you need to pull out any fancy or complicated techniques. You can mix together all the ingredients in the same bowl at the same time and turn out a great loaf of bread. No need to auto lease. I'm going to enjoy this sandwich, and I hope you check out my book, No Nonsense Sourdough. I've got 18 straightforward sourdough bread recipes with no unnecessary steps and no complicated terminology. Check it out at the link below or at grantbakes.com ebook. I'll see you in the next video.